Hello everyone, welcome to Blazity Tech Talks, where we talk about modern web technologies. I am Jakub. And I'm Hugo. I want to talk with you about React and SEO, and especially this myth that React ruins SEO. Okay. I believe you must have heard it a hundred times, at least. It came up, it came up. And I think that sometimes our clients say that as well. So I wanted to clear this up. Mm -hmm. mm, could you maybe elaborate why is this like this whole idea going around and why are people saying that? How did this start? So <clears throat> I think it has a couple of, um, couple of elements to it. I think the myth originated from uh, from, from the truth, actually, so it's not really a myth, because it used to be the case. Right. Because when React started, it was purely a client-side framework, in, in a sense that uh, everything that you would get with React would only be displayed um, when the JavaScript was downloaded and executed, as opposed to immediately. Okay, um, so maybe to clear this up, uh, yeah, I, I think I think to, to actually talk about it, we have to go more in depth in terms of uh, rendering strategies of websites. Okay, maybe let's start with that. Then. Yeah. So so basically, we kind of differentiate a couple of different rendering strategies for the websites, uh, and the two most prominent ones. Uh, there are more, but these two will be will be key to uh, to answering your question. Would be the client side rendering and the server side rendering. Okay. One is on the client, one is on the server. And uh, React originally started as only the client side one, meaning that all the content and all the site that you would develop using React would only be loaded uh, after user entered the page. So how it usually how React works is that you provide an HTML, which is an empty div of an ID. Right. And uh, HTML tag div, right? HTML div. I mean, it's just an, it's just an empty HTML document right. uh, with one div tag yeah. that has an ID mm -hmm. and, a React, and your React application loaded in a, in a script. And that's basically all that uh, React applications were. And so the script would execute after you downloaded the HTML, right. then execute and then inject your whole application into the empty div. So you would end up in a much more complicated structure and in an actual application, but that would only happen after you downloaded everything. Okay. So, so, so initially what you, what you got from the server was just an empty HTML with one div and one script. Okay, so so React when it reacts on the uh, renders on the client side, mm -hmm. it is injected into that single div, right? I mean, the, the process is always the same. the The thing is that on the client side, it it hap it obviously happens on the client side, but on the client side, the difference is that you actually have to download all the JavaScript and ex parse and execute all the JavaScript, which takes time after you get the empty HTML. So it all happens on a user device and it is a potential bottleneck. Um, the user device is a potential bottleneck because if the user device is not performing very well uh, or is doing some other intensive tasks, it might take a long time for your actual application to appear. Okay, so that's client-side rendering. Yes, okay. the client-side rendering is yeah, this is just waiting for the JavaScript to be executed and parsed, or rather parsed and executed. And then the JavaScript uh, creating the virtual DOM and all the all the technical things uh, that, that happen in React uh, have to be uh, executed in JavaScript. So we could visualize it like uh, React comes to our website and starts building it on user device, like in, in building yes, so, all the blocks, like paragraphs and yes, everything. So, so, so I think a good way to visualize it is that with client-side rendering, you get a, a blank uh, piece of paper, like a blank, sh bl blank sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. And then um, basically React, after you get your sheet of paper, uh, React comes and starts painting it with, with the actual picture of the actual website. In reality, it happens 
most of the time it happens really really fast so it's most of the time it's even like it's quite hard for users to differentiate between a like, client side rendered and other types of rendering uh, but many of times you can see uh, for example loading screens when you first open a site uh, like loading spinners or that some parts are not loading immediately and it's usually because uh, because of client side rendering okay and what are the other types of rendering so the other type uh, that was that is also the most popular uh, is I mean, maybe it's not the most popular but it was uh, it's the mo one of the most uh, talked about strategies of rendering it's the server side rendering and it's basically exactly what client side rendering is but instead of giving us a blank sheet of paper that that, that react then comes and paints onto um, react does this on the server side before giving you the sheet of paper so i'm downloading the so sheet of paper of that already has all my yeah, elements so, right so, so you can think of it that the server that previously gave you a blank sheet of paper that react painted on now gives you the piece of paper that react already painted on on the server okay so it's basically i'm, I'm getting the this whole picture yes it's complete yes. Yes, and you would think, um, you'd think, uh, like just thinking about it, that the the server side rendering is obviously better because there's no waiting time. But in reality, it's really not uh, because it still takes time for React to paint on the server. But now the time for React to paint uh, is dependent on the server and not your device. So it's more. So instead of waiting after you get your piece of paper for React to paint on it. You wait for React to paint on it, but not on your device, but somewhere oh, else before you right. get it. So I, I assume it's more stable, yeah. right? Because the server is always performing the same way rather than some user um, maybe is on an old Well, not really, phone. because the server might get overloaded by requests, Okay. while your device will likely not get overloaded by so requests. It's, so it's it's not certainly black and white. It's, you can't say that server-side rendering is... 100% better. No, 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 no. It's it's a common misconception, or rather, thing, or rather, something that people uh, tend to think that SSR is automatically a better strategy, and in reality, it's not, um, it's because you might have the the added time of the server actually processing all the all the HTML, all the uh, basically everything that React has to do to render your application has to be done on the server, uh, and then you have to wait for that, right, before you get it actually right. on your device and is there a way around it like is there another strategy that you can implement well to usually not when you wait? implement server-side rendering you also implement uh, like different caching strategies so you try to cache everything aggressively and once so, re, once uh, the server renders something you generally want it to just keep that version of it mm -hmm. of course yeah and not not really change it um Okay, Caching so strategies, of course, uh, differ greatly uh, depending on what type of content you're serving. If you're serving a static, uh, a completely ever never changing uh, content, then it's probably a good good idea to cache everything super aggressively. If you have like uh, product pages uh, for for your e-commerce store where you have uh, a lot of promotions going on, a lot of like recommended articles that it's per user. And it's, a lot of variables can add very quickly and um, right. most of the time the good good way to go about rendering is to use a mix of everything okay but circling back to um, actually react and SEO the misconception or rather what used to be the truth uh, came from the time where react was only client-side rendered and most of the actual web crawlers so the robots that all the search engines use to analyze the content of the sites were not running JavaScript. Because oh, it, because oh, so they were getting just the blank sheet yeah, of paper. Yeah, basically. Okay. And that's that's that certainly changed over the years. And now all the major ones, or rather the major one being Google, um, runs JavaScript and it doesn't really matter to it that uh, your, your site is entirely client-side rendered. Uh, so in terms of SEO, that part is not really the truth anymore. But it still might be the case that if you render everything on the client side, 
uh, you can still suffer in terms of performance uh, with, with certain things taking a lot of time and impacting your overall performance and perceived performance, something we talked about in Google Vitals. Uh, and so, so CSR, client-side rendering, can affect your performance and SEO rankings, uh, but not in the way you think it might. Okay. Okay, but uh, also, so there is client-side rendering, there is server-side rendering, and we usually use something called static rendering, right? Yeah, is so... It, is yeah. it some form of server-side rendering? So static-side rendering is a form of server-side rendering, but instead of um, rendering pages on demand, so when user asks for it, uh, we do this during build time. So for instance, if we have a news site that has um, X amount of articles written, uh, since we know that the article has already been written and it already has static content that doesn't change unless someone of course changes it uh, but on general basis it doesn't change right so we can build it once and have a ready page that we can serve to the users we can cache it indefinitely it can live on a content delivery network and not have any involvement with rendering at all so going back to our sheet of paper analogy we're now not waiting for the server we're not waiting for react to paint the sheet of paper before it hands it to us before right. the server hands it to us but rather we give the server all the information that we already have so we tell the server hey we have uh, 1500 articles that we would like to make pages from and the server goes okay uh, let me give let me uh, tell react to paint all the 1500 articles uh, and then all, all I have to do later is to just hand them over if someone asks for them without so, React having to do uh, any okay, work rendering. Okay, okay. Right. So, so React renders them only once when it's building, right? Well, server server well, tells yeah. React to, to render them. Yes. And then it's available for mm -hmm. users to just download like the whole ready painting or picture. Sort of. So React doesn't do all the work that it has to do because even if we have a static website, um, you get static content in, term, in, in the form of the static HTML, usually some critical CSS, which is inlined at the beginning. So you get a whole picture, the full picture, uh, but it's not really a full picture because there is a lot of interactivity to the website that still relies on React. So after you get your full picture, or rather not the, the, the semi full picture, uh, you can see everything. You can see how the site looks, uh, where is everything. You don't have any content jumps or anything loading uh, additionally. Uh, but the site is not uh, ready, so to speak, because it still needs React to initialize, create virtual DOM and allow all the interactions. But it's a much better experience because you get immediate feedback and you immediately see the website. You can immediately scroll through it. And uh, since React has much less work to do now because it's already rendered everything on the server, uh, it, it can start up and uh, add interactivity to your site much faster. Okay, and from SEO perspective, for crawler, the he the, the crawler sees basically HTML, CSS, and JS, right? That's, that's yes. Th there is absolutely no difference then between a site like this and the site that we use, we all used to do in high school, uh, right. on on CS classes where we had to do a, a static website with an HTML file, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file. Um, that's basically what what we get with static uh, with static rendering. So basically, for from SEO perspective, it doesn't matter at this point, right? It's just a website like any other. It could be a React website, yes, or maybe it could yes. be it's, it's sort of Angular the, website. Yeah, it's sort matter, of the ultimate static. form of serving websites because it's the most simple one. Because all you are serving are HTML, CSS, and JS. There is no uh, framework that has to initialize. No caching involved. Uh, everything is just completely static and all we have to do is basically rebuild the stuff that changes so we have 1500 articles and one of them changes uh, in, a, in a cms for instance we can just send a message to our server that hey this article changed we need you to rebuild it we can just rebuild this one article and we have the ready painting again that can be served to anyone anywhere right right so and then we don't have to pay for uh, for any, or maybe rather, 
Uh, the, the thing that we didn't talk about with server-side rendering is that uh, an added cost of having a machine that has to render something. Right. Because on the client, we don't need a machine because every device is a machine. But with server-side rendering, you have to have physical devices that, when asked for, can do rendering. And rendering is um, usually done using Node.js, Node.js because it's the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript ecosystem. Mm -hmm on the server and it's usually quite expensive in terms of CPU. Right, because you're paying some server to do the work that user's device would do, right? So you're paying exactly. for server time exactly. and, and depending its execution. on how aggressively uh, you can cache the resources, um, it has to do either not that much work if you can cache aggressively or it has to do a lot of work if it has to uh, server render to every visitor so it's an added cost and it can be a big added cost and since as we already as we already talked about it uh, all the major search engines use bots and crawlers that can run javascript uh, that cost is basically becoming uh, harder and harder to justify. So to sum up, we could say that today React, just using React doesn't uh, negatively affect your SEO uh, performance and uh, that you should probably strive towards having static rendering for your website in most cases. So I would say that heavily depends on your use case and what content you're serving to your users. Um, in terms of whether React affects SEO, uh, definitely doesn't, uh, just like any other framework really, or any other library doesn't really affect SEO. Uh, it's all much more complicated and only really depends on your implementation of the technology rather than the technology itself. Mm -hmm. um, but generally speaking, the usually the best approaches are the mixed approaches. So ideally you would want to static uh, render as much as you can. Everything that doesn't change, even if you have an e-commerce site, you probably don't change uh, like a header on your website on a regular basis uh, or like a footer or uh, or a sidebar or like the general layout. Um, right, so, so you like render... Product categories. You try to render as much as you can statically and then you basically can have a mix of SSR and uh, CSR with the elements that you need to be dynamic. So if you have to respond to uh, some advertisement cookies uh, with different type of content in the sidebar, you can do this with everything being uh, statically rendered, but the sidebar being uh, yeah. client-side rendered right. or server-side so, rendered. Okay, so, so we always should choose the solution based on the project, right? And just uh, make sure that we can render statically as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That would be the best approach, but the rest of it is, is basically depending on the project. Yeah. The, the general the project. rule of thumb is that the more you can actually render statically, the better. Ideally, you, I, ideally you want to uh, have everything statically rendered, but um, many of times it's possible, but a lot of times it really isn't. If you have a, if you have a web app, uh, especially the one that requires a login you can't really statically render yeah, of for course, every yeah. single yeah. user um but i mean in theory you could but that would oh, be a horrible idea <laughs> um and then yeah and then yeah, add add client-side rendering or um yeah I, I would say just add client-side rendering if you need dynamic data and uh, statically right. render everything else but as with everything, the best answer is it depends. Of course. But one thing is for sure, React doesn't ruin your SEO. That's one thing we can Absolutely. certainly agree on. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Okay, thanks for that and have a good Thanks. Evening. Yeah, have a good one.